Greetings. Um, it gives me great pleasure in a short recording here to say a few words in memory of Professor H. Bolton Seed. I first met Professor Seed um, when I arrived as a fresh-faced baccalaureate graduate in the mid-70s from Manchester University in England. And um, I was there to do the taught, to attend the taught master's program that was uh, in those days highly successful with 60 or more uh, students taking that master's program. And um, Professor Seed was, he taught the first of that sequence of flagship courses, the 270A BC sequence. Um, when I arrived, I was Professor Seed's teaching assistant on the 270A course. So on day one, I was working with Professor Seed fairly closely on uh, the running of that course. Um, when I arrived in, in Berkeley, let me share a screen and see if we can figure this out. Um, Professor Seed looked like that. Um, unfortunately, perhaps I was not quite as well turned out. I've often thought, however, that Berkeley is, was wasted on students now looking back on it. Um, but uh, let's, let's stick with Professor Seed's photograph. Um, he, as you know, H. Bolton Seed, Harry Bolton Seed, his middle name in intrigued me at the time, an unusual name. And of course, quite soon I found out that uh, Professor Seed was actually born in Bolton, which is in Greater Manchester. Uh, it's a suburb, a sort of satellite town of Manchester. All my family come from Manchester. Um, and I've been to Bolton numerous times before I came to Berkeley. My late wife's first job was in Bolton, Lancashire. So that was fascinating. I know the Bolton name has been passed on from uh, Harry's father and uh, his son also carry that name and maybe other generations too, for all I know. Uh, so the Bolton connection is, is uh, fascinating for me. Um, although Dr. Seed stayed in, was in the UK until his mid twenties, I suppose, when he moved to the United States, I can say there was not the trace of a Lancashire accent in him when I uh, turned up. Um, I also know that Professor Seed in his days in Lancashire, England, considered a professional football career. Um, and that is a football crazy, soccer football that is, a football crazy part of the world, Manchester. Um, and uh, he must have been extremely good to have been considered uh, to even consider a professional career. I know he went on to captain his University of Met London uh, team later on, and even that's no, no, uh, that's not too shabby either. Uh, the excellent, he must have been an excellent player. In fact, he seems to have been good at just about everything he tried. Uh, he did a, a PhD in structural engineering at London University. So I suppose it's, it's to all our benefits that um, he did not pursue structural engineering or soccer uh, in his career. He, he, he uh, converted to geotechnical engineering and particular geotechnical earthquake engineering, where he, uh, of course, made his world famous name. Um, he, uh, of course, he's famous for geotechnical earthquake engineering, but I'd just like to highlight the quality of him as a teacher. He was an absolutely brilliant lecturer. When I sat in his 270A classes, because I was taking the class as well as being a TA at the same time, I was amazed at the clarity and quality of his lecturing. It, the time flew by. You know, how often do you get to the 75 minutes of somebody talking and you really don't want them to stop? He, this, these, date any kind of PowerPoint or anything like that um, and he would write on the board in beautiful handwriting in full sentences you know and just the right speed just the right pace for the class I you know nowadays I just feel that, 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 that style is quite rare nowadays um, maybe there was a little bit of high-tech a story I have to tell maybe about that uh, that era as his TA uh, Professor Seed was good at showing slides, 35 millimeter slides in a carousel. You'll 
some of us will remember that. And he had me as the TA sitting at the back of the class. I had set it up, of course, before, the, before he walked in and make sure everything was working and focused. And he would regularly show slides, you know, things that students like to see, earthquakes causing all sorts of damage, the Niigata uh, apartment blocks lying on their side and um, the Alaska, Great Alaska earthquake, you know, damage to the neighborhood of, of Anchorage. And uh, while he was telling these stories, he would every now and then say, uh, next slide. And Vaughan Griffiths at the back would press the button and um, advance the carousel. One day, maybe about halfway through the term, I uh, realized there was a, a way of doing remote control on these things. <laughs> Not wireless, of course. I realized there was a long wire I could plug into the carousel at the back of the class train the wire down the terraced sort of lecture room to the front and up onto the desk at the front and right in front of the lecture there was a little uh, module with two buttons for one for advancing and one for reversing the slides and i didn't tell professor seed about this until he walked into class one day and i said hey uh, well professor seed great news um, we've got an improved system here you can advance the slides yourself when you're ready by just pressing this button. And he looked at me uh, in a rather somewhat less than impressed by my suggestion and um, in a perfectly polite way said, uh, Mr. Griffiths, I'm not accustomed to advancing my own slides. And uh, I got the hint very quickly and about a split second later I was back at the at the back of the uh, lecture room with my finger ready on the trigger to uh, go back to normal business with the carousel. I went on to become a lecturer at Manchester University and um, in 1979, which was the last time I saw Professor Seed, I was visiting Berkeley and I can tell you the exact date because it was rather a memorable day. I, um, I went to Berkeley on the 6th of August 1979 and I made an arrangement to visit Dr. Seed in part to, to see him. He invited me for lunch which we did with, with Mike Duncan as well. Uh, I also want to thank him for his uh, generosity in sending me some of those slides that impressed me so much. Uh, I used them in my own lectures and he was very generous and prompt in getting a uh, I think Nancy Hose, who ran the civil engineering office, would have uh, uh, put several slides. They made copies of all the best slides and sent them to me. Um, and I still have them to this day. Um, on the 6th of August, I was on my way to Davis Hall on the campus of the University of California at Berkeley. And I went up in an elevator in Davis Hall. And as the doors opened on the fourth floor, people ran out into the hallway from their offices. There had been a quite significant earthquake as I was going up on the elevator, and I missed it. I had no idea. I didn't feel it at all. And um, to this day, I have never felt an earthquake. But it was sure a remarkable day. And uh, a talking point, it was the biggest earthquake for 68 years, not the 2006, but the uh, 1906, I should say. But I think the 1911 was the largest of magnitude earthquake before that in that part of town. Um, so we went to lunch and talked about many things, including the earthquake that had happened earlier that day. When I went back to the faculty club where my wife was staying, she, she had witnessed, you know, the paintings on the walls swinging around and boy, so I still not still waiting for my first earthquake. And that was a, a very memorable day uh, indeed. Kept in touch with Professor C periodically from, from then on. Uh, I remained at Manchester for many years before moving back to the United States, uh, where I work now in Colorado. Um, just a final word and a final share. Um, I've always been very um, attached to the card that I received back in 1989 um, from Professor Seed's colleagues. Um, and I've always kept this card. You can see 
It's pinned on my, been pinned on my pinball. I brought it from me from Manchester, um, announcing the sad event of Dr. Seed's passing on the 23rd of April, almost exactly 31 years ago. Um, and I, I really kept it because Professor Seed, and I will put it back on my pin board uh, as soon as I get back to my office. And uh, Professor Seed had a great, uh, huge positive influence on my career. And certainly I will never forget him. And it's been, it's my pleasure to have said a few words uh, in memory of Professor Harry Bolton Seed. <laughs>